Hello, welcome in this video named the short column effect. So in this video we shall be discussing on the short column effect that comes during earthquake on some columns in the buildings. So first we will see what are the types of failure of column and we will see what causes the column failure. In the types of failure of column we have the failure under pure compression forces, combined bending and axial stress for failure, buckling failure, shear failure, failure due to inadequate confining reinforcement which leads to bulging of the column and torsional failure so that the column gets twisted. In the causes of failure of column we have the poor design, construction deficiency including inadequate curing, poor workmanship, poor material that is substandard material and finally the short column effect. So our focus is on the last one, the short column effect. Now when we say short column, immediately it may come in our mind about the definition given in the reinforced concrete uh, codes of the countries. In Indian code it is given as length, effective length to least lateral dimension ratio when it is less than 12 it is a short column. For the purpose of the present video we are not going to this definition here short column is relatively short column. A column which is shorter than the columns in its surrounding will be called a short column. Here we have taken a column where the height of the column or length of the column is L which is subjected to a n moment m at the top and m at the bottom. For the sake of convenience we are considering both the top and bottom moments to be same and it has a lateral thrust capital H at the top and as a counterbalance same value at the bottom. If we take moment of all the forces about the base of this column, we get this equation H into L equal to M plus M, which gives capital H equal to twice M plus L. This is the shear produced in the column due to the N moments. Now let us take a short column. This column is having a length of L by 2, half the length of the previous long column. So this is a short column in our definition. For the sake of simplicity, we consider that the same N moment is taking place at the two ends of the column as that in the long column. But the, the lateral shear produced at the ends of the column will not be same as that of previous column. So we are giving a new symbol here which is small h. So by taking moment of all the forces about the base of this short column now we get this equation small h into l by 2 equal to m plus m which gives small h equal to 4m by l. So we see that the lateral thrust that is coming into the column due to the n moment is now two times than that of the long column. So this is the reason why there will be higher lateral thrust due to n moments in the short column. So the conclusion is short column suffers more shear force. Now short column is relatively stiffer. Why it is stiffer? It is understood from the stiffness properties of the columns. We have the general formula for lateral stiffness of columns against lateral sway as 12 vi by l cube where l is the height of the column. So for our case the long column has this value which where the length of l and short column has length l by 2. So this formula when fit, fitted we get 96 vi by l cube which is much higher. If we take this ratio of the short column stiffness to long column stiffness we see it is of the order of 8. So in this condition we see the stiffness of the short column is much higher than the long column. This 8 value we have got is for a particular case when the short column is having a length half of that of the long column. Now let us compare the lateral forces attracted by the column. During earthquake a column will be attracting lateral force in proportion to its stiffness and the displacement it suffers. So the lateral force will be k into displacement. For the sake of simplicity, let us consider displacement in both short and long column are same. So force in the long column will be given by the stiffness of the long column into displacement and force in the short column is given by stiffness of the short column multiplied by displacement. If we take the ratio of these two, displacement getting cancelled, we get short column force by long column force equal to short column stiffness by long column stiffness which is 8 in this particular case. 
So the lateral force attracted by column due to earthquake due to inertia force is also much higher in case of short columns. Short column attracts more lateral force. That is the conclusion we are drawing. So summary thus far what we have studied is that short column has large shear arising out of column and moment. Short column attracts more lateral force out of inertia forces generated during earthquake. Both these forces act together as shear force in the column. So the column having large shear force may fail in shear. And shear failure by, nat by, by nature itself is sudden and brittle. If it is sudden and leads to collapse of a system, then the occupants will not have time to go out. If it is brittle failure, then you don't get any ductility out of the nonlinearity in the system. So energy dissipation will not be there in this kind of failure. Thus the short column may lead to damage or even collapse of the building. Now let us see what causes the occurrence of a short column, where from it comes. So one example is the building on slope. Here the building is considered under slope, one frame is shown. For the sake of simplicity, we are considering all column depths are of identical value. So we see that the on the downward side of the slope, we have a taller column than on the upper side of the slope. So relatively, this upper column, upgraded column is short column. So thus, a short column may happen in a structure in sloped foundation. Now, the confinement of the infill. Partial confinement of the infill may produce short column effect. For example, we have two columns here where the infill has been put to certain height, not the full height. So when the infill wall has been put on the on sides of the column, the column cannot move sideways left and right in this figure. So the column that is able to move left and right is this part only, this height of the column. This height is now shorter in comparison with the other neighboring column, this or this. So this part of the column will act as a short column. This is arising out of infill, infill provision in some part of the building. Then a short column effect may also come, occurrence may come due to the provision of a short column over a beam. For example, here we have taken a lintel over which somebody has put a column here for some purpose. So this column is suddenly shorter than the neighboring other columns and will be subjected to short column effect. So in the summary, now we can say short column effect is shown by columns which are relatively shorter in length. Relatively means in relation to the columns in its surrounding. Short columns are produced due to construction on sloping ground, confining infill wall, erection of short column purposefully. Then the short columns attract more lateral force and shear force. Short columns are more susceptible to damage, may lead to collapse of building. Now question is how to avoid this short column condition. The answer is very simple. To eliminate short column effect, you simply avoid providing short columns. So avoid all these conditions that we have discussed, building on slope, then confining effect and intentional provision of short columns somewhere. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching the video. Subscribe the channel, like and comment. Thank you. See you again.